Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions. Now whether you're brand new to 3D printing or you've been doing this for a while, today I'm going to show you five critical things to avoid to get the best quality out of your 3D prints. So let's go! So I'm going to be using this Ender 3 V2 here to show you five tips on mechanical tune-ups, things that tend to loosen or wear out over time. And not only am I going to show you how to fix these things, but I'm going to use some printing examples to show you exactly what happens when these things go wrong. So the first print here, we're going to loosen this X motor pulley and see how this print does with a really loose belt on this extruder. So this thing is quite loose. We're going to print out a Benchy and see how it does. All right, so I printed this out with a super loose belt here. You can see how loose this is. And the results really aren't that bad. I've got a little bit of a scratchy hole in the front here. But honestly, I was expecting worse. So this time, we're going to loosen this even more. We're going to loosen this as much as possible. The pulley is starting to slip on the gear, so we're going to print this and see what happens. All right, now we're done printing with the mega loose belt. I mean, this thing is so loose, the pulley is skipping there. So looking at the bench here, we can definitely start to see some major shifting in the X direction. Uh, from the Y, it looks okay, I guess. It's not horrible, but yeah, we expect to see uh, some big problems in the X direction. The front of the hole here is uh, pretty ugly as well. So to summarize here, we have our baseline print with a tight belt. We have a really loose belt and we have a mega loose belt. We can see here the comparison from the really loose belt. Uh, doesn't look great, but actually it's not as bad as I was thinking it would be. And then we look at the comparison here of the mega loose belt. I mean, you have to pretty much try to get your belt this loose. <laughs> Those are the results there. All right, just for fun while we're at it, I'm gonna loosen this pulley even more. So now the stepper motor is going to skip and, well, let's see, maybe it can't even hit the X stop switch here. All right, you can do it, little printer. Go, 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 it's almost there. And yeah, it looks like it failed, it died. We have the printer warning screen here telling me to stop being an idiot, uh, kindly noted. All right, now that we're done with that first stunt, we're going to use the knob on the side and tighten up the X belt here. So here's my attempt at making a visual of how tight your belt should be. You don't want it so loose that it's sagging, but you also don't want to over tighten it either. And for our next feat of destruction, we're going to take and loosen the eccentric nut on the bottom of this printer head. So this is a really common issue for people new to 3D printing, common with Ender 3s is they'll see their printer head is a little bit wobbly, maybe not this bad, but they won't know if it's normal or not. And I'll tell you it's not normal, and the way to fix it is tightening this eccentric nut on the bottom. So if we turn that one way, we can get that tightened up, but if we turn it the other way, we're gonna get this thing really loose. So we'll get this about dangerously loose, and we'll, we'll let it go with another Benchy print. All right, now I've got the print done with the loose extruder, and to be honest, it looks like the print doesn't look half bad. And actually, this print turned out really well. There's almost no issues with it. Maybe a little bit here on this layer. Looks like something got smashed together a little bit there. But other than that, this uh, turned out way better than I expected. So if you ask me, that print quality is still just too good. So I'm gonna take things to the extreme. So instead of loosening the bottom roller wheel, I ended up removing the whole thing entirely. Let's see how this thing prints without that. So right away we can see without that bottom wheel, the printer head is just hanging on there at an angle. So it's kind of hilarious that it can even print like this. So let's let this thing finish out and see if we really need all three roller wheels. Oh man, this is painful to watch. Just look at the BL touch just crashing into the print. Not to mention the printing head just bouncing around as it runs over the part. Oh man. I cannot believe we just printed this Benchy with this printing head. I mean, this thing is just holding on by a thread. And actually this Benchy looks pretty decent. Uh, from, from the front, we can see this cabin is uh, skewed a little bit here and on the back side, there is some, some ugliness here. It's not a perfect Benchy, but for what we're working with, I'm surprised it looks so good. I mean, this thing was printing at a 20 degree angle and the BL Touch was catching on the print the entire time. I'm surprised I didn't break the BL Touch, to be honest. Also, this is pretty funny. Normally the bed probe reads within 0.1 millimeters tolerance on the bed, but with this loose printing head, it was reading up to 0.8 millimeters in some places when I did the automatic bed leveling. So let's get this roller wheel and eccentric nut added back to the printing head and get on to our next print. 
What I like to do when I tighten this eccentric nut is lock these stepper motors in place so this can't move back and forth and then feel this wheel on top. If it can slide freely, that's not what we want. So as you're tightening it, tighten it just past the point where this wheel stops sliding and then you should be good to go. You don't want to over tighten it because you can also cause problems with that. All right, next up in our printing test here is the Y direction belt. So this belt here under the bed, we're gonna do like before and just loosen this a little bit and get onto the print. All right, so let's take a look at how the print turned out. So we can see up here, it's a little bit shaky in the cabin area. It's also a little bit rough around the hull, not too smooth there. So we can see on the back side of the cabin here, it is a little bit rough. There's some shifting there. Top of the chimney looks okay, that looks round. But then we go to the front side of the cabin here and we can definitely see some shifting going on here. All right, you know the drill. Now it's time to take this print to the extreme. Now I've loosened this pulley even more and now this belt is mega loose. We're gonna be in for a real treat here with this print. So let's see how it goes. We can see here during the print, this belt is just jumping around cause it's so loose. And we can see the benchy up there is not looking so good. All right, what happened to this benchy print here? This thing is ugly. We can see the front side, we can see the back side, everything looks bad. So with a loose belt and the bed shifting around, I think what we're actually seeing is this infill poking through the front here. And then we go to the rear side of the cabin here and look at that, and that is super shifted, and it's like an S shape. So this is the result of a really loose Y belt, so keep yours tight. All right, next up is one of the lesser known mechanical adjustment points of 3D printing and that is these roller wheels that hold your y-axis stable. So one way you can tell if these are loose on your printer is grab the base plate under your bed, not your bed, but this base plate here, and wiggle it back and forth and see if you have any movement. So if you have some movement, you can tighten up the eccentric nuts on the right side to tighten up your bed. But today, we're gonna to be doing the opposite and we're going to loosen these. And this is what this looks like if these are loose. So quite a lot of stuff going on there. So we're gonna do a benchy print and see how that turns out. And just another view here, this is what our bed looks like now. So quite loose, quite a bit of slop all over the place. And actually this is in uh, all three directions. We have X, Y, and Z. So this might be a little bit ugly. All right, this print just finished up with the loose Y axis rollers. So let's take this benchy off and take a look. This print looks really good. Just a couple little artifacts here and up at the top of the arch. But honestly, I, I wouldn't complain. I wouldn't know there's anything wrong with the printer. Surprising for how loose this base plate was. So the last print with loose Y-axis roller wheels was a little bit too smooth. So now I've taken things to the extreme. So if you see this bed, it is all over the place because of these loose roller wheels on the bottom. So let's uh, see if we can get this to print off a benchy and see what it looks like. And here we can observe our 3D printing seesaw here as that thing rocks back and forth throughout the print. All right, this time it looks like our loose Y-axis rollers have made a difference. So I'm guessing part of the print was printed like this and then halfway through it got unbalanced like this. So I basically have two different halves of this boat, which is pretty awesome here actually. So there we go. Uh, don't leave your y-axis rollers super, super loose. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Here's a little bit loose y rollers and here is extremely loose y roller wheels. So completely different results here. All right, here's how to fix a loose bed by tightening your Y rollers. So on the right side, there's two different rollers here that have eccentric nuts on them. So we're just gonna turn the one in the back first until it tightens up. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the front wheel. I actually found out that my rear rollers were not able to be tightened all the way. So I took this off and inspected the wheels and sure enough, they had some excessive wear. So I'm gonna replace a couple of these rollers and see if that helps. One thing I like to do with these eccentric nuts when I have them taken apart is put a mark on the side that is the tightest for adjustment. So here we can see the circle is farthest to the left, which would be the tightest position. And if we turn this, this circle will be farthest to the right, which is the loosest position. And now there's a mark here for the tightest position. So in the future, I can know which way I'm turning these nuts. And just like that, it's perfectly tight. No more wiggle. So for this next printing test, we're gonna swap out these silicone spacers under the bed. 
for the flimsy stock springs that came with the printer. And then we're going to leave these bed screws as loose as possible. All right, now I've installed these stock bed springs and I've left these adjustment nuts as loose as possible. So we're going to print a benchy like this, see how it goes. And here's the result of the loose bed spring print. And to be honest, it looks too good. So we need to take things up to the next level. That's right, we're going to get rid of the wheels entirely. Still have the bed springs, but there's no nuts on the bottom. Think of how much weight we're going to save. 46 grams, that's how much. All right, with the nuts removed from the bottom, the bench is now looking not so great anymore. Starting to see some waviness in the walls here, but I think it's still pretty good. So we're going to go to the next level and go no springs. And there we go, with no springs, the bed is actually resting on the belt crimp here. So it's wobbling back and forth. Um, I cannot express this enough. Do not try this at home. There's some traces on the bottom of this bed that if those are cut by these sharp bolts, could short out or even worse, cause a fire. So do not try this at home. All right, so I've done bed leveling in some pretty crappy situations in this video, and this one takes the cake. I was not able for the life of me to get this bed leveled good enough to print. So I'm gonna say we need springs or spacers or something. We can't print like this. And I prefer silicone spacers. So let's get those put back on the bed. And now let's print our worst benchy yet. And since this whole video has been about taking things to the extremes, that's what I'm doing now. So I've got loose bed springs, I've got a loose bed, I've got a loose Y belt, loose X belt, loose extruder. Everything's loose. So we're combining all of it together and we're gonna make a really, really bad benchy. So let's go. And here we are, the worst benchy I've ever printed. 360 degrees of awfulness. So again, this is all of the bad things that you could do with a printer mixed into one. So finally, here we are, a benchy with a good mechanical tune and a benchy with almost everything wrong that you could do. So it's a great contrast here and it's a great end to our video. I've had a lot of fun going through this video and making all these different mistakes. Um, and I hope everybody else has learned something watching this video. As always, leave any questions or comments you have down below and I'll do my best to address those. So until then, I'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions.